The following is an Outdoor Channel original production. This subtropical region of Africa supports an abundance of amazing wildlife. Huge numbers seeking water and refuge. Others waiting for the unwary. On this episode of Expedition Safari, I'm in northern Namibia on the Okavanga River. In this river, there are huge populations of Nile crocodile, and I'll be hunting one of those crocodiles with Tormelin and Cochrane safaris. It's wild, free-range Africa. SCI's Expedition Safari is brought to you by Safari Club International, first for hunters. Bringing fresh water to a parched land, the Okavango River is a significant life source for this astonishing region of Africa. An important migration route for a large variety of game species. The riparian landscapes along these waterways remain relatively unchanged and undiscovered. Today's adventure takes us to the Mahango core area of Babatwa National Park in northeast Namibia, an exceptional hunting concession of Tormelin and Cochrane safaris. This is one of Tormelin and Cochrane's camps, and it's on the banks of the Okavanga River. Now this river empties out into the Okavanga Delta, the largest inland delta in the world. It's this river that holds huge populations of Nile crocodile. There's uh, literally thousands of crocs on the riverbanks, and huge ones. The climate is perfect. The Okavango water is not cold because it's come from Angola, which is a tropical country. Right. And um, the other thing is because of uh, Namibia's conservation. I mean, crocs are protected and has always been protected, so nobody disturbs the population, nobody disturbs the environment on the banks where they breed, where they use uh, the sand to breed on, because the Namibian government and game department is very strict and has been doing a very good job. That's why there's so much crocodiles, like hippo. I mean, everything is in good numbers because of the conservation. This is a true tented safari camp. You stay in a tent, you hunt open free range country, you hunt the waters of the boat. And in this part of northern Namibia, in the Caprivi Strip, there are wildlife to be seen even right here in camp. We can see lechway out in front, buffalo crossing, elephants come by. You even have to zip up your tent because the monkeys can come in and steal your things. If at camp we sit there, you see the crocodiles come by and, and look at us. Every year, a number of people get caught in Okavango, women and children that wash their clothes there, just outside the park. It's very dangerous. So we're looking for crocodiles in the 15-foot range. We'll be hunting with a guide named Carl, who knows this area, grew up in Namibia, and knows how to hunt successfully on this river. Well, it can either be by, by baiting, with um, either from game you shot, depot, or buffalo, or anything you put up a bait next to the water. Um, you see where the big ones concentrate, because they're territorial, and you'll put up a bait there. Uh, otherwise, you just drive around with the boat, and if you can see them on, on a long distance, you will stop the boat and try to stalk them, or you can walk on the side of the river. So if you can see it, you can or spot it and then stalk it from there. Carl wanted to hunt along the banks of this Okavanga River and really cover some countryside. So we walked through the swamp, we drove the boat along the banks of the river, looking for crocodiles. We saw buffalo, we saw lechwe, we saw a number of different animals. The bird life here is incredible. We even saw quite a few crocodiles, but nothing of huge size. So we spent a few days just looking over the area. That buffalo didn't do well, huh? No, it's an old bull. Old bull. Yeah. And the croc's just been coming up and eating right out of his cavity. Yeah. There, it? Occasionally come across the death of old age, which is exactly what happened as we looked along the banks and saw an old Cape buffalo, a buffalo that had a horn broken off. He obviously lived a full life, but he expired, not but a few days before we got there. Yet he'd been fed on by the crocodiles. So that's a natural bait, something that you want to go back and check. It's very possible a big crocodile is going to find him, feed on him. 
There's a big croc track around here, so we'll have a look. Coming up, Mike Rogers combs the banks of the Okavango in search of a mature Nile crocodile. When you hunt crocodile, you want the crocodile shot to be the perfect shot, and you want to see him not be able to move. Next on SCI's Expedition Safari. SCI's Expedition Safari is brought to you by Safari Club International, first for hunters. Described as the river which never finds the sea, the Okavango River in northern Namibia gives rise to many forms of life in the great Kalahari Desert. And it's here with Tormelin and Cochrane Safaris that Mike Rogers continues his search for the region's apex predator, the Nile crocodile. When you look closely at a Nile crocodile, you can tell it's an ancient, prehistoric-looking, cold-blooded beast. They'll spend all night long in the water and then come out in the heat of the day. And they'll bask in the sun on the banks of the rivers, usually in the sand where it's warm for them. And that is where the crocodile is most vulnerable. When you hunt crocodile, you want the crocodile shot to be the perfect shot, and you want to see him not be able to move. When the shot is placed right, the crocodile will stay anchored in one spot on the bank of the river and not be able to get into the water. A croc in the water is a bad thing, because he can go anywhere and you may never see him again. Once you've shot your crocodile, your tag is punched. This is spot. Yeah, go like that. Okay, he's on the other side of the banks. Carl and I saw a big croc body. It was on the far side of another inlet, another little stream. This about two, three hundred yards away. Now, approaching a croc, even at 200 and 300 yards, croc, if he sees you, if he smells you, he's going to slither into the water and it's over. We decided to use the wind park the boat, and go for a walk. down low in the reach to get as close to him as possible. Yeah, because he's 250 yards here. Yeah, but if we can get to the side, then we're shooting across and yes. it'd be 80, 90 yards maybe. Yeah. That's, okay. Yeah, that's good. That's perfect. All right, I'll follow you. All right, let's do it. walk across the open ground and as we get closer we start hunching over and as we even get closer we start crawling on our knees and we get really close we're belly crawling. Finally got to within range of what looked like a really good pushing 15 foot croc. He was facing towards me, yet as he turned his head, he would turn it and then give me that shot in the corner. And Carl and I talked about it. He said, yes, you can take that shot, but you want to aim forward a little bit because it's got to go through that main spine area in between his head and his body and anchor him right there. You see this smile? Yep. Shoot him right behind that smile. Okay, ready? Yes. Shoot again, shoot again, shoot again. Shoot again. Shoot again. I need a better angle. Let's go. Okay, okay. Hit him again. 
coming in. Right here, right here, right here. No. As the bullet hit, I could see that it was a good shot, but it didn't break his spine because his tail was thrashing around and he moved his head a little bit. And you know, if you break the spine, it might shiver a little bit, but it's not gonna move like that. So I reloaded and shot again. After the second shot, he almost laid over. It looked like he was completely done. I knew that from that frontal angle, I wasn't gonna have a really good opportunity for a third shot should that be necessary. So I got up and moved as quickly as possible to go 30, 40 yards to my left and get more of an angled shot to see if I can't really make sure he's anchored. But just as I've loaded and I'm just getting down to take that third shot in case it's necessary, he starts moving and he moves quickly and slides into the water and by the time I brought the scope up, all I could see was his tail disappearing in the water. Once he disappeared, I knew we had some big problems. I've got my gun, buddy. He will go down in and he will come back onto the banks again because you have pain, he will come to the banks. Don't worry about it, he will come back, definitely. I thought he was angry. I thought he didn't look like he was going anywhere. Yeah, I thought so too, but I'll just be patient and we'll wait a little bit. He will definitely come out again. After a good shot on a massive crop, Mike and his guides regain a foothold for a final recovery. Okay, I got him. Or have that. Right oh, you gotta be kidding me. He rolled down. Did you see that? Here on the banks of the Okavango in northern Namibia, Mike Rogers and his guide wait and watch for any signs of a fatally wounded crocodile. But patience is wearing thin. Carl told me immediately, don't worry, he's gonna come back up. He's got to come back up to breathe, but also to get on the banks. He doesn't wanna sit in the water. So I trust my guide and, and I've seen it happen before, but not in a situation like this, not where I thought, he had no chance of getting in the water and then slithered off like he was completely fine. So we waited about an hour and a half and we're just sitting there on the banks of the river. So we're all watching the water and sure enough, the croc pops up. What does he see? Uncle Mike, is that him? That's him, that's him. As we were looking straight across the river where we last saw him, he popped up off to the right, and he pops up and gets up on a bank facing straight away. And there's no shot whatsoever, but it looks like he has gone up there to expire. Okay. I got it. I got it. He's right there. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. He rolled down. Did you see that? He just rolled off like he was stone cold dead. Yeah. He's splashing there, Uncle Mike, let's... Yeah, it, let's, let's just leave him. But it looks like you he's going see. down right there. I think we'll have a look with the boat there. But if he's dead right there, you'll find him with the boat? Maybe, if he's dead, yes, otherwise... Otherwise, he'll come back, he'll come back up just like he did here. Yes, yes. I didn't think he could get up on that bank. I can't believe that I was just coming yeah. up, just right just there, and he just slipped off that thing. I never thought. I thought maybe he'd crawl off, or he'd, yeah. or we'd spook him. But I didn't yeah. think he'd roll off like he was dead. Yeah. Oh, we thought he was dead at the first one. How many times do we have to kill this guy? <laughs> I don't know, but he doesn't want to die. <laughs> Carl gets in the boat. He goes over with the trackers, and they start pulling and poking around, hoping to find the body laying right where it fell off the bank. And I'm hoping the same thing, but I'm also concerned because there's a current going through this river. As the river gets into the deeper parts and the bigger pools, the current gets pretty strong. And even if he is dead and gone, he can travel a long distance before we find him. This is what they call my crocodile. I pulled the trigger, I anchored him, I even insurance shot. It looked like he was done. Now we got in the boat, we're looking for him, but we've got water that is very hard to see through. It's very dirty water. It's bloody water right now. There are crocs all over this place, and there are hippos all over the place. 
This is your one shot. You get one license, you get one chance at it. So we're gonna try everything we can to find this particular crocodile because that's my croc, that's the tag, that's the one chance I got. So stay with us, we'll be right back and see if everybody survives the crocs, the hippos, and the bloody water of the Okavanga River here in Namibia. You are the first to rise. First to teach, to get your hands dirty and lend them. You're first to protect. As a hunter, being first is a big part of who you are. And we are first for you. The single most influential hunter's rights and conservation organization in the world. Join like your way of life depends on it. SCI's Expedition Safari is brought to you by Safari Club International, first for hunters. I got it, I got it, it's right there. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. He rolled down. Did you see that? He just rolled off like he was stone cold dead. Yeah. After a clean shot on a mature African croc, Mike Rogers and his guides exhaust every opportunity to recover the primordial brute and fulfill his one and only tag. When Carl came back and told me that he's gonna come back on the rivers, I doubted it. I thought, I don't think so. I mean, he fell off into a kind of a deeper spot. It looks like he's gonna go down the river in the current, but let's trust our guide. So we go back to camp, we have lunch, we wait, and when we go back down to the same spot, sure enough, that croc had come up onto a different spot, but very close by, this time on the close side bank. There. He's just by the bush. What do you want to do? He's laying like that there. He's hoping we'll go down like that, and then we will crawl to that brush there, and then come out to the right. He looks sick, it's the same one, isn't yes, it? Yes, it's him, definitely. Okay. I can see the blood here on the nose. Okay. So definitely, so we'll just go low and crawl up to him okay. as close as possible. Come. To be on the safe side, we're gonna approach just as though it's a normal hunt, we don't want him to slither off again. So we crawl hands and knees as close as we can get to this croc. And as we look now, with that distance, I can see his eye just opening a little bit. And I can see his body moving up and down just a little bit. We can also see some blood on one of his teeth. We know we've got the right croc. We now need to finish this job. How come I can see him clearly? Yeah, I can see him. See him just behind that smile. Like the way he's quartering, just behind the smile. I got him. He hasn't moved. Are you sure he's not already dead? No. No, he's still alive. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Got him right. Let's go closer. Let's go closer. That's like, give me my gun. Dead? It looks like it. He looks done. Oh, thank you. The light was going down by the time we got to this croc. But we had to get him back to camp because we wanted to get him on the banks and, and in a really nice spot to take some pictures. We loaded him up, tied him to the bottom of the boat, and drug him all the way back to camp. There we go. There you go. In that morning light, we got a chance to really look closely at the crocodile and, and really see the size, the massiveness of his teeth, his jaws, the width of his body. It looked like, and even Carl said, he could swallow a human whole and not, with not a problem. 
And when you look inside his mouth, you can see that is very possible. These crocs are huge. We measured him at 14, 10, 14, 11. It's about as big as they get in this area of the world. It's an amazing animal. But you're only gonna see that here in Africa and in places like Northern Namibia on the Caprivi Strip with a company like Thorme and Cochrane Safaris. All of that can be found at the Safari Club International Annual Convention. If you love hunting, you'll want to join the organization that is first for hunters. It's not just about wildlife conservation, it's about protecting your freedom to hunt. Whether it's white-tailed deer in your backyard or crocodile in Namibia, all over the world, Safari Club International is getting the job done protecting your freedom to hunt. So be a member of the organization that's first for hunters. Log on to safariclub.org and find out how you can be part of this incredible organization.